Well, Halloween may be months away, but I'm going to have a little bit of an early treat with y'all. As I probably bring to you a review of Ernest Scared Stupid right now. Bring these entertainment breaking reviews. So, green, so greetings and Vern as well. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. This is Duel, aka the Big D. So I'm going to bring to you guys another review of the RSP World Series. And this time around, I bring to you Ernest Scared Stupid from 1991. Now, this, of course, would be the last film in the Ernest series to be released through Touchstone in Disney. Because, well, they decide not to extend their deal with Jim Varney, who once again plays the title character of Ernest P. World, and John Cherry, who directed this. Now, the film was actually shot in Nashville, where all the other, the other three Ernest movies, as well as Dr. O and The Riddle of the Gloom Beam, which will be reviewed real soon, were shot. But anyway... And after that, all future Ernest films were independently produced through M Shell Producers. With only one of them being released in theaters before going to straight to video. So anyway, its only credits are actually shocking because it features a montage of clips from various horror and sci-fi films. Ranging from the original Nosferatu from 1922 to the original Little Shop of Horrors from 1960. So anyway... We got Jim Varney back. Playing not just Ernest, but lots of others, including his own Auntie Nelda and even his sister Bunny Worrell. Plus a lot of others. Also in the cast is Eartha Kitt as Old Lady Hackmore, which I'll talk about her in a little bit. Now, the only other person from the previous movies is that's back is Bill Burge, and he plays Bobby. But unfortunately, Gaylord Sartain's not back, so... Enough said. So, we start out in, in Missouri in the late 19th century where a demonic troll named Trantor transforms children into wooden dolls to feast upon their energy. And on. <clears throat> he is captured by the townsfolk and sealed under an oak tree. One of the village elders, an ancestor to our favorite country bumpkin, Phineas Worrell, who, yes, is Jim Varney, establishes the seal. Out of vengeance, Trantor places a curse on the Worrell family, saying that he can only be released on the night of our Halloween and by the hands of a Worrell. As part of the curse, every generation of Worrells will get dumber and dumber and dumber, until the dumbest member of the family is foolish enough to release him from his earthly prison, culminating in, you guessed it, Ernest P. Worrell. <laughs> well, the... Now, a hundred years later, Ernest, now a sanitation worker, helps a few of his middle school friends. Well, Kenny Binder, who is actually the, the, well, the kid who actually helps him for most of his family, along with Elizabeth and Joy, they construct a treehouse in the same tree that unknowingly contains the dormant creature once the, since the mayor's sons who are major nuisances, demolish their own cardboard haunted house. Now, when Old Lady lives <coughs> not too far away from that tree, Old Lady Hagmore discovers this. She's upset and all. Well, but when Ernest falls her, he learns the story of Trantor and... You guess it, he eagerly reports it to the kids, and inadvertently, Ernest releases the troll. Now, Joy's walking home from the treehouse when he hears something rustling through the trees, and 
Soon, once he slowly walks, he accidentally slips down into a muddy hole and tries to grab Joy's wrist and turns him into a wooden doll. Well, Ernest finds Sheriff Binder, Kenny's dad, and explains the situation, but they don't believe him. After none of the townsfolk will assist Ernest because they care about the Halloween party that's coming, he mounts a one man, one dog, yes, with the help of his canine rim shot, who of course appeared in the last movie, as a fence operation in preparation for Tranter's appearance. Meanwhile, he captures another boy who is on a skateboard for a second bit victim. Now, Tom Tulip, along with Bobby, hoping to take advantage of Ernest, sell him a variety of fake troll traps, but one backfires on the mayor's sons and Ernest is fired from his job. So, Ernest, Kenny, and Elizabeth return to Hackmore, where they learn that the heart of a child and a mother's care are the only defenses against the troll. And later that night, Elizabeth's been claimed as the third victim as, he, as Trantor sneaks into her house while she's resting on her bed. Yes, Kenny and a, and a friend named Greg are walking. Trantor uses Elizabeth's voice to lure Kenny away, then takes Greg as a fourth victim. Despite parents being upset at their missing children, Sheriff Binder and Mayor Murdoch still proceed with a Halloween party at the school, and they believe the missing children will be there. Unfortunately, Trantor appears and and takes the mayor's oldest son as his fifth and final window. In the ensuing fight between Trantor and Ernest, Trantor turns Rimshaw to a window before being driven off by soft serve ice cream covering Ernest's hands. And Kane realizes that mothers carry for some milk and rallies a troll fighting team to destroy them. And that's what they do. <clears throat> now then, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the last bit, aka the ending, so you have five seconds to stop the video before I go on. Go to the description box and fast forward to the time to avoid the ending. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Here we go. Back at the treehouse, Trantor successfully summons dozens of trolls while Ernest tries, but fails to stop them. But the townspeople show up. However, the trolls overwhelm and bend them up. But Kenny and his friends, a.k.a. other characters and members of the World Clan, arrive and begin destroying the trolls with milk, all kinds, including powdered even. <laughs> During the fight, Trantor escapes beneath the tree, where he summons the powers of the underworld, making him invincible, especially to milk. When King unsuccessfully tries to destroy him, who turns him into a doll as well, the rest, with the rest of the townsfolk now back him up and tell him to douse Trantor in milk, Ernest realizes that the troll children were excuse me, sorry for stuttering, susceptible to the milk, while Trantor himself would be weak against unconditional love. A.K.A. the heart of a child. So Arne, that gave Ernest an idea. It takes him and dances to him while the mob watches in shocked, stunning, uh, surprising, whatever. Feeling with as much love as possible before finishing my way, I smooch on the on the troll snuff red nose. Ew! Which causes Trantor to just go all and then blows up like a bl explodes blows up like a paper bag. With Trantor's destruction, Ernest is yet again proclaimed the hero. And all the wooden dolls are restored, including those from the early 19th century. And life returns to normal. Sheriff Binder apologizes to his son for not believing him, and there is. And Ram shuts back to normal, too. Yeah. And that's how the story goes. Now then, though I've watched it a few times, it's fun and all, but I realize I'm liking the other three, the first three Ernest movies. But still, this is a good movie, though. Would I recommend it? 
Yeah, sure, go ahead, give it a try. Oh, you might like it. I mean, it does have some moments, some I kind of don't find too amusing, but there are some actual funny moments, and, and I'm telling that he, and Ernest with him, with Ole Hackmore, tell him that this is great danger and what have you, and facing trash or says all sorts of things, he even says 8th level Mario Brothers, <laughs> that's funny, so anyway, I did like Another great performance from Jim Varney, and uh, Eartha Kitt was great, of course. I absolutely did like her, and um, the kids were all good. So, oh yeah, of course, yes. Well, no, there's actually some people who actually appeared in the Haver It's Ernest series. Daniel Butler's in this place, Chief Box, not Chief, I mean Sheriff Binder, and Jackie Welch as a teacher. Yes. But anyway. This film kind of didn't do as well as the other three movies, and was considered a big disappointment, and why have you. Oh well, but it still became a cult classic, though. So, again, I'd say give Ernest Scared Stupid a try. I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, it has lots of fun moments, and what have you. So, that's, that's about it. So, what did you think of Ernest Scared Stupid? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section. Like and subscribe to my channel as well, and be a part of the Big D Nation! And join me next time, which will be uh, Sunday, when I review the last Ernest movie to ever hit theaters, Ernest Rides Again. Now... And of course, I'll have more coming up, including a new Saturday morning TV log. But anyway, th which it's this weekend, and of course, then I'll do Ernest Rides again. Now, if you liked what you saw, you can check out my previous two Ernest reviews. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Ernest Goes to Camp. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Ernest Goes to Jail. And the... And as a bonus for how if for you Halloween lovers, the bottom left hand core is my review of another group of a great Halloween special. It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. In the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe to my channel. And please, I would love to get to 200. I'm still at 193, but that's my best showing. But still, I need seven more. Can I still make it? I hope so. But anyway, thank you again for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya. Know what I mean? <laughs>